Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. I'm at the Alora Research Station today, catching up with Horace Bonner, Ontario Soybean Specialist. How are you doing? Always a pleasure, Bern. Yeah, great. Thank you. Hey, I want to talk about uh, potassium deficiency mm. here. Um, mm. Now, we've got some of it in this field here at the Research Station. Um, I'm seeing it at the top of the plant. Is that normally where we see yeah. it, or do we see it low? Well, you'll see it's just along the edge of this particular field, and that's interesting in and of itself. Obviously, the nutrients weren't applied to this part of the field. Now, this is a beautiful looking crop of soybeans here, but right along the edge, there's some potassium deficiency, and you can see that typical kind of yellowing around the outside of the leaf. And usually, early in the season, of course, it's on the older leaves we see the symptoms because the potassium is mobile in the plant, and wherever the sink is, it kind of pulls that potassium out of the old leaves into the new. But here, interestingly enough, now at this time of year, of course, the pods are pulling in all those nutrients, and so it's even sucking it out of the newest growth. So sometimes people think there's a different issue here than potassium deficiency because textbook says it's on the older leaves. I'm here to tell you at this time of year it's often on the newer leaves at the top as well and that's just the way it is. When it comes to potassium deficiency, what type of yield impact are we looking at? So it really depends on the soil test value. I mean that is why as agronomists we always hit on doing a soil test to know because it really is a good predictive tool. Five to seven bushels is the yield hit we see when we're below a critical value, yeah. right? Now, if the if the uh, beans are only a little bit potassium deficient, even the ones along the edge here this late in the season, I wouldn't expect a five right. bushel. It's 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 less than. That. So we want to be able to sort of tackle that potential yield loss, and that means adding potassium. Um, mm -hmm. What's uh, what's the rate? What what can we apply? Right, and uh, right. hey, what's the safe rate? Well, it's a good question because, of course, the economics come into it, but also this problem that a product like 0060, which is, you know, the cheap form of uh, potassium, has chloride in it. Yeah. And you, for each 100 pounds of 0060, or potash as we call it, uh, you put on, you're putting down about 40 pounds of chloride. And so uh, in this trial right here, we are experimenting with 100 200, 300, and 400 pounds of product, potash, right? And so we want to see if there is a maximum safe rate. Generally speaking, in the past, we've used 300 pounds of product to be the safe number. Now, some of our American friends say that's too high. They say 200 in the spring is enough, and you will see some work out of the US on lighter soils, drier conditions, where even that maybe is plenty. And so that's the issue. Now, one of the recommendations, of course, would be to apply a couple of weeks before planting, that helps, or even the fall before. Personally, like if you look at these trials, right, or this trial that we're standing in here, awesome beans, right on this side, that 400 pounds I talked about, on this side, no potash. And you can see pretty clearly, there's no visual problem here. Now, will these beans yield more? That's another whole discussion. But in terms of an obvious, clear um, toxicology or a problem with that high rate, not at this field, not this year. No. Hey, let's talk about uh, product choice, potassium product choice here. Um, any worries, any issues there? Well, and so then you, of course, you know, if you take the chloride out of it, why not use something like potassium sulfate? And then you've got, of course, a little bit of sulfur in there. So that's 005017 is the analysis. And there's some Americans that are saying they're getting a little more response out of that. And it makes sense if you're in a field that is sulfur deficient. Of course, right. then you're going to, right? And so that's also in these experiments to try to assess if there's a difference in terms of the, the uh, product being used. So far, we are very happy with straight potash 0060 because 
of that earlier five to seven bushels we hit on when the soil test is low, right? right. Um, and so at the end of the day, this is in its early stages, but I personally think there's absolutely no problem whatsoever with potash on normal Ontario farms. Mm -hmm. Only in very dry conditions on sandy soils do you have to kind of think about the rate. Yeah. Right? And we're talking here, yeah. obviously, about broadcast, yeah. right? We're not talking in furrow. You and I have had that discussion before. In furrow is a very different discussion, and we, we try to stay away from yeah. potash, period, in furrow for soybeans. Final thought and recommendation here. You've got 100 all the way to 400 here. You're not seeing any issues. Where's your safety zone here? Yeah, so I, I kind of settle... An economic zone. Yeah, 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 no, good point. Mm. So I kind of settle in still that, you know, you have to do what makes sense economically. And so a 50 bushel crop removes uh, 70 pounds actual. So that's, um, you know, a little bit more than 100 pounds of 0060, right. obviously. So in our trials, if you want the biggest economic uh, payback in that year, believe it or not, we kind of max out at half of that. Mm -hmm. So only about 40 actual K is where we max out for economics. Now, long-term mm -hmm. building soil tests, which you know we want to do, you should really be putting on at least 70 to replace what you've removed if your soil test is you know, going the wrong way. Now, of course, if your soil test is super high, yeah, don't put on anything, yeah. right? Waste of time. Yeah. Well, Horst, hey, some great insights. Always some great trials here at the Allura Research Station. Thank you, sir. Always great to have you on the soil. Very good. It's been good. Thank you.